And there's the light. Racing in the cup. The Phantom a little awkward down on the inside. Sub-Zero away quickly, so to our Pompeii. Telesto and Zamination drop out at the tail early. And Azuro, Sarasun, our Pompeii, Kiwi Golf are all very prominent as they come down the straight the first time. Our Tristolite just behind them and at the post, Sarasun led Kiwi Golfer. Our Pompeii dropped in on the rail, beautifully placed third from Azuro. Our Tristolite trapped out three wide, turning out of the straight. Then the Phantom following our Pompeii, followed by Fra. A length and a half to Sub-Zero being trailed by Silk Ali, field officer. One and a half manner is a mere Seattle, then Great Vintage. She's got about five behind her at the moment. Azam and Castle Town, a length and a half to Slanchivar well back. Then Telesto and Zamination is last in the Caulfield Cup. A little over 1,600 to go. And Sarasun, the leader, about two lengths to Kiwi Golfer. Our Tristolite getting into one off the rail, or nearly there. She's still caught three wide at the moment. Followed by our Pompeii having a lovely run over on the inside end of Zam. Won the Phantom being trailed further back a length away then by Fra. Next Sub-Zero and Silkali together. Further back is Field Officer and then Air Seattle about the middle of the field on the rail. Trailed by Mannerism and Castle Town. Next is Great Vintage. She's followed by Azam and then came Slanchy Bar. Behind them is Telesto and last is Zamination. About 1,100 left to go now. And the leader is Sarah Sun from Kiwi Golfer. Our Tristolite is third on the outside of our Pompeii. One further back in the field then came over on the outside of Zuro Trail by the Phantom and then Fra. Further back is Sub-Zero. He's trailed by Silk Ali. There's Great Vintage taking off round the outside from Field Officer. Next is Slanchy Var and Mannerism followed by Castletown who's well back. Zamination making a run at the 800 from Air Seattle. Well back on the inside and then Telesto and Azama's last of all. Down the side they come. Sarasun led Kiwi goal for a half a length. Our Pompeii just behind the leader. Our Tristolite is still there despite a hard run. Azuro round the outside is making ground quickly and so is Fra. Great Vintage wide out coming into it and they're trailed by Sub-Zero. Silk Harley held up over on the inside and the Phantoms to the outside running on. Round the bend and Kiwi Golfer dash to the lead from Sarasun, Fra, Azuro. Our Pompeii trying to get out off the pocket on the inside. Here comes the Phantom and Silk Harley together. Kiwi Golfer the leader, Fra's coming at it strongly. Fra race to the lead from Kiwi Golfer and then Silk Harley, our Pompeii. Fra's in front there and near the line. Fra's holding on, Fra's won it. Fra from Air Seattle who flashed home wide out. Photo third between the Phantom, Silk Harley and our Pompeii. Telesto is next, Kiwi Golfer weakened and then Azuro. They trail Castle Town behind them. Uh, to finish in the race, pulling up there was the Phantom. Then the uh, well back is Sarasun, Slanchivar and Mannerism, Sub-Zero field officer. Our Tristolite, great vintage. Well back in the field to finish is Azam and Zamination towards the tail of the field in the Caulfield Cup. Tight go here. After running at a Foster's Caulfield Cup, you'll find the winner number seven, Fra and the Victorian Tote, $34.60 and eight ninety. Second number nine, Air Seattle, showing $5.60 and very tight for third, it's a photo. Maybe number eight, Alpine Pompeii, but there's a few of them there. Judges call for a photo, seven gets it, Fra. Number seven, Fra. Ridden by Peter Hutchinson. Has won the Caulfield Cup. Second goes to nine, Air Seattle. Flashing home from well back in the field. And a photo for third. Judge calling for a photo. I think it's the Phantom. Six third. Six third, the Phantom. Written by Jay Walker. Seven, nine and six are the numbers. Seven, nine and six in the Caulfield Cup. Fourth was our Pompeii. And fifth, Silk Ali. Seven, nine and six official. Seven, nine, six in the Caulfield Cup. In the time of two minutes and 28 seconds. 0.9 outside of the uh, the course record and race record set and held by Sobar and Silver Bounty. 796. Fra's caused a surprise to win the cup narrowly. Always prominent and lovely to see uh, Peter Hutchinson win a really big race. A delightful young man and uh, one of the real characters of the sport, the laughing jockey, has got plenty to smile about tonight. Fra the winner, David Hayes in just three years of training. I think he had ivory way when he first started uh, just beaten in the cup by Let's Hello. That was his uh, closest he's got. What a, what a wonderful start to his training career uh, in the first three years, having 
already now won a Cox Plate and the Caulfield Cup. A short head is the winning margin. A short head by a long neck and a half a head to the fourth horse and then another half a head to the fifth horse. Short head by a long neck of the margin. Short head by a long neck. And then a half a head to the fourth horse. Now, let's see. Peter has taken his cap from his head and uh, raises it to the crowd. This horse has been the bridesmaid uh, so often. He's been placed in a Mooney Valley Cup, placed in a St George here, also placed in an Australian Cup and the Hong Kong Cup as well. Here's the 1993 Foster's Caulfield Cup winner, number seven, Fra. Number seven, Fra, by Topsider from El Kazabea. Raced by Sheikh Hamdan bin Rashid El Maktoum, who uh, had that Talak win the Caulfield, the Melbourne Cup in 86. Now takes the Caulfield Cup with Fra, trained by David Hayes and ridden by Peter Hutchinson. Second, Air Seattle by Air de France from Latest Melody, trained by Clary Connors and ridden by Shane Dye, who fills the runners-up stall for the second year in a row in the Cup. And third, The Phantom by Noble Bijou from The Fantasy, trained by Noel Eels and ridden by Jim Walker. Seven, nine and six. Fourth home was our Pompeii and fifth, Silk Ali. The time, two minutes, 28. Well, he could only manage eighth placing last start. Let's go down to Peter Booth. Yes, Greg, I'm in the mounting yard and uh, David Hayes is being interviewed at the moment. Peter Hutchinson, the uh, winning uh, jockey, has just uh, gone past me, but uh, Colin Hayes is with me and you led the horse in. Well, yeah, Shay Camden, of course, is not here. And, um, and uh, David asked me to represent him, of course, as I introduced Shay Camden to Australia. Uh, well, Colin, a 34 to 1 chance on the TAB. Did you expect Fry to win? We had something on him. He had no luck at all his last two starts, and uh, Will had a little bet on him because uh, we knew that he'd, he'd run a very, very good race, and he was above the odds. And that's not just saying that. We told that to all our friends. I spoke to Peter's uh, father, Bill, before the race. He thought Sub-Zero uh, would win the Caulfield Cup. He wasn't a good judge, but Peter was by taking them out. Yes, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, right, right. Yeah, well, um, uh, Peter's father was never noted to be a good judge, and he'll <laughs> laugh at that. <laughs> but a uh, great rider. And Peter's, uh, um, you know, it's great to see him following his father's footsteps, and he was apprenticed to me, and, uh, and he's sort of like family to us, so we enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you, Colin, for your time. OK, well, David's being interviewed by television stations down here. Greg and uh, Peter will be out shortly, and hopefully we'll have a word with the winning jockey in a few minutes. Good, Peter. Yes, uh, even though, as Colin says, the horse didn't have a lot of luck, he was still um, not one of the more popular winners of a Caulfield Cup. This horse last start middle of the field in the uh, quick ease the old uh, Herbert Tower handicap ran last in the Underwood Stakes it had a training setback so it's been uh, to David Hayes's great credit that he's been able to get the horse right on the day sixth in the Craigley before that he was uh, pretty hard to have and I don't think figured in anybody's uh, pre-race prognostications here Seattle's run a bottling good race he's flashed home from the tail of the field and uh, the Phantom has run a very, very fine race indeed in third place. Uh, but our Pompeii is probably the horse now that uh, everyone is going to want to be on in uh, the Melbourne Cup. It's a terrific run. Correct weight is there. Correct weight is there. Correct weight for the Foster's Caulfield Cup numbers 7, 9 and 6. A short head by a long neck the margins. Half a head to the fourth horse. And then there was another half a head to the fifth horse. A virtual blanket finish. Time, 2 minutes 28. Very, very closely contested race uh, right to the wire. We can go back down to Peter. Yes, Greg, I'm just waiting on uh, David Hayes to complete uh, a TV interview here. And hopefully we'll get uh, 60 seconds or so with him. And uh, he's in, uh, in demand from the journalists and uh, all the TV crews here at the moment. By the way, the crowd here at Caulfield this afternoon is, uh, they told me... A, a crowd and a half. It's one of the biggest crowds for Caulfield Cup for uh, quite some time. 
I'll just try and get uh, David if I can. David, just a just a just a quick one. I'm sorry, Clem. Clem Dimsey's here uh, for ABC TV. I think we might do it together. Go on, Clem. You well, go. David, uh, remarkable to win a Caulfield Cup when you almost lost your chance with Palace Rain. Yes, uh, you know he was the logical form horse in the race, but uh, he. he uh, you know, you lose one and you gain one, and this horse saddled up beautifully today. He was very relaxed, and uh, he, he put up a, a fantastic performance. What about Colin? Uh, he was, your father was one of the first to congratulate you. What did he say? Yeah, he, he was uh, shaking my hand and going for the angina tablets. He was that excited. <laughs> well, I can tell you, Ron Hutchinson was through with Peter, too. Oh, yeah. Well, Pete had a bad week last week, and it was just great to see him bounce back. What about the Melbourne Cup? Well, you know, uh, I, I, he's at probably a slight risk at the diff diff distance, but he's got that ability to sit on the pace and he can quicken. And uh, that wins a lot of races. So, you know, he's the one of the horses they'll have to beat for sure. Did your heart rate jump near the line? Uh, I certainly did, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. OK, David, they're being whisked away for the presentation. Greg, uh, back to you in the commentary position. OK, uh, let's have a look at the Super Tab dividends on the race. Fra paying 30, 4, 60 and 8.90. OK, we'll leave uh, Greg Miles there, but uh, a wonderful race, tremendous finish there, but uh, the horse with the blinkers, number seven, Fra, getting the money from number nine, Air Seattle, and uh, in third place, number six, the Phantom, and uh, as you...